RubyConf, my name is Brittany Martin, and guess what? I'm great at quitting. There are a lot of great talks, and I want to thank you for joining me today. Also, we're not alone. This is the live stream room, so if we could all turn around and give our friends on the live stream a wave. We wish you were here, but thank you so much for watching. Speaking at RubyConf has been one of my personal career goals. I just never thought it was going to be about quitting. I cannot express enough thanks to the event organizers and the incredible event that they have pulled off. I also want to thank our awesome captioner today. I have been taught that if you read something, it must be true. So it's wonderful to have this captioning to make everything so accessible. Thank you also to our awesome audiovisual team. It's a tough job, but it's so awesome that this, this talk is so accessible. So I am the lead web developer at the Pittsburgh Cultural Trust. The Pittsburgh Cultural Trust is one of the largest nonprofits found in Pittsburgh, and its entire goal is to bring art to the people of Pittsburgh. It was founded in 1984. It promotes economic and cultural development in downtown Pittsburgh. I've been working there for about four years. Now, funny enough, I love my job so much that I feel that I've actually peaked in my career. However, when I told my boss that this was the title of my talk, he definitely made a face. Now, pictured here is my best buddy, George Lazenby Chewbacca Brown. <laughs> a little bit of a, it's a short name. I am the host of the Ruby on Rails podcast, a weekly conversation about Ruby on Rails, open source, and the programming profession. The best part of running the podcast is getting to ask questions from my heroes and also bringing on new voices in our community onto the show. I am always open for feedback, comments, and of course, guests. And I'm serious about that. If you've never been on a podcast and you have something interesting to say, please come talk to me after this talk. Speaking of podcasts, I was recently a guest on the Bike Shed talking about quitting. I think it's going to become my thing. And Steph is an excellent host. So if you enjoy this talk, I highly recommend checking out that episode and subscribing to the Bike Shed because it's an excellent podcast. Lastly, I'm the president of the Little Steel Derby Girls, Youngstown, Ohio's roller derby team. People get into roller derby for all types of reasons, but most of them are looking for a community. It's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether or not you get back up again. So enough about me. Why am I here talking about quitting? To take on a new opportunity, it's very likely that you need to quit something in order to take advantage of that opportunity. There's lots of content on hiring, but what about quitting? Now wait a minute. Why should I be the one giving this talk? I just told you that I love my job and I've been there for four years. What's going on there? Now, over the course of my career, I've had several hey boss, I'm quitting talks. One involved tears of sadness. One involved tears of happiness. One involved uh, my boss asking if he could come with me. <laughs> now, in my career, I've actually migrated from marketing and sales into a product manager role. As I learned to code, I also evolved from a purely technical support role into a full-time developer. Those two transitions accounted for a lot of jobs that I've quit in the past 10 years. Actually, I consider myself a certified quitter. I've quit all kinds of things. And I recommend that you spend the time to look at the opportunities that you have quit in the past. Because there are so many roads that you can take, but one thing is certain. What you have quit in the patch very much shapes where you are today. Quitting is not giving up. It's choosing to focus your attention on something far more important. Quitting is not losing confidence. It's realizing that there are more valuable ways that you could be spending your time. And of course, quitting is not making excuses. It's learning to be more productive, efficient, and effective instead. So, so much time, so many things to quit. But for the sake of focus, today we are going to focus on quitting jobs that fall within your career. A lot of the advice and stats are coming from individuals who've gotten hired and quit jobs in the United States, so a quick disclaimer here. I believe a lot of the advice I have to share today is still applicable to anyone outside of this country, though. My goal in this talk was to avoid any of your coworkers gleefully telling the terrifying tale of when you quit to pursue your dream. We're here to avoid any and all embarrassment. That being said, I do like to be entertained, and I bet you do too. If you have a good story, please tweet it out to me. My Twitter handle is on each of the slides for your tweet pleasure. I'm all ears, and if we have a little bit of time at the end, I certainly want to hear some quick uh, horror stories that you might have to share. So, have you ever heard the expression, never burn a bridge? 
It means that you end a relationship in such a way that you can never go back and restart the relationship again, or if you did choose to go back, you would have to beg your way to forgiveness in order to restart that opportunity. One tale that I love to share is the story of how someone in a DevOps position at a company decided to quit their job and they chose to go into the server room and sever every single cable to every single device in there. So, <laughs> I'd consider that bridge pretty burnt. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I would not trust that person to work at my company. So before we get into the actual act of quitting, let's dive into some background. The first question to ask ourselves is what's going on in our, uh, with our careers as developers? And the truth is, we are just so lucky. According to the US Labor Bureau, the job look outlook growth for web developers is more than double the national average for all job growth up until 2026. The reason for this is there is a huge growing need for developers, and it's why desperate employers in metropolitan cities around the nation are paying top dollars to web developers, software developers, any sort of developer who can demonstrate the skills they need in order to get the job done. Now, I include myself in this, but many of us have bet our careers to either start or shift into software development. As someone who's formerly from a marketing and sales background, I love the continued education, great pay, and stability that this career brings me. So, the nation's unemployment rate is at a near record low, with more job openings than candidates to fill them. And the technology is, is, is a sector of one of the fewest people available for all vacant positions. Where can we go for answers on how the developers are feeling about their careers? Well, we turn to our tried and trusty source, Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow's annual developer survey is one of the most largest and comprehensible survey of people who code around the world. Over 90,000 people participated in the 20 minute survey that just took place. So the first question to dive into is how satisfied are you with your current job? Well, as it turns out, Developers tend to be more satisfied with their career in general than with their current job. You can see here that about 20% of developers surveyed are at least a little bit dissatisfied with their job. An opportunity here. Now, how about what do you hope to be doing in five years? I love this question because as developers, we should always be forward thinking and thinking about what's coming next in our career. Don't just stay stagnant and think about what you're doing now. Well, as it turns out, developers' career goals are largely focused on technical work, which with over half the respondents say they want to be in the same or a different technical role in the future. I found this fascinating. About a quarter of developers say that they want to start their own company, which makes sense. If you're a developer, you're able to build. If you can grab those marketing and sales skills, you are an amazing combo and you can build your own company. Now, this is a good one. How long ago did you last change your job? this is kind of awesome, is that more than 50% of developers surveyed have switched jobs in the last two years. I'm at that bottom 20%. A weird feeling since so, of my, so many of my coworkers at the nonprofit that I work at proudly tout the fact that they've been there over 10 years. Lastly, and something that is an interesting question, are you actively looking for a new job? While a full three quarters of developers are interested in hearing about new job opportunities, only 16% are actively looking. This is so interesting because a common meme that circles around in our community is that developers are not interested in what recruiters have to say. But the stats kind of point in a different direction. So knowing this, why do we choose to leave our jobs? It's clearly for the cash, am I right? All problems can be solved if we're compensated more. That is absolutely false. Money is relative. It turns out we don't mind so much about our actual level of income as long as we're able to afford our basic needs with some extra for entertainment and savings. We seek new opportunities for other reasons. Autonomy is the ability to, sh to shape your work and environment that allows you to perform at your best. This might mean more control of your work, perhaps your work environment, or as noted before, starting your own company. Motivation. Motivation is rather elusive, isn't it? Some days you feel it, some days you don't, no matter how hard you try. You stare at the computer screen, willing yourself to type, create, develop, but instead you find yourself simply going through the motions, barely caring what you're doing. You need to find a job where you feel motivated to put in your best work every single day. Growth. Have you excelled in your current role? Have you grown to your full potential? 
have you hit that ceiling? If you've answered yes, then perhaps it's time for you to move on to the next stage in your career. Moving into a larger or perhaps a new position might seem like an obvious next step. Now, for a definite reason for us to celebrate quitting. Remember, we're all taking such wonderful care of both of our health and our financials, right? Retirement. It is an exciting reason to quit, but in all seriousness, preparing for retirement as a software developer could be a wonderful conference talk in itself. People tend to be happiest when they're in their 60s and 70s, when work responsibilities have been shed, the kids have grown, and everyday stress levels melt away. I recently had a coworker declare that she's gonna be retiring at the end of the year, and I couldn't be more happy for her. She's in great health, she loves her family, she has all kinds of plans of what she wants to do, and she's gonna be happily retiring at the end of the year. You should, choose, you should think about that as a really valid reason to be quitting your job. So, when should you decide to move on? Worth. If you suspect that you were not being paid what you were worth, do your research. The best way to set your personal salary range is to use an anonymous salary calculator based on anonymous surveys from thousands of workers with your job title, skill set, education, and perhaps geographic location. Do not, by any means, trust anecdotal information from coworkers. If you suspect a pay disparity, consult your boss or your human resources rep. If they won't even discuss it, it's likely a telling sign. I don't like anything that's going on there. Negative energy. If you are consistently bringing negativity into your home and work life, you might be too comfortable. You're just coasting along. You might tell yourself it's just a job. You can do your job with your eyes closed. That's a lot of negative energy that you don't need. If you've become a sad cheerleader, this has definitely happened to me, you find yourself not cheering for your employer's successes, innovations, and plans to bring the team together. You might find yourself being snide to any company communications. If you're feeling uninspired, you don't ever want to go to work, you're making careless mistakes, the environment is toxic, or you're feeling mentally or physically unhealthy. Your career might be stagnant. You could be bored, perhaps overloaded, the organization itself is going downhill, or there's no great opportunities for growth. And this is a tough one. You're not being heard at work. Maybe you have a ton to share at work, but nobody's listening or nobody seems to take your contribution seriously, or even worse, other people are taking credit for your work. So, you've decided to leave. How are you gonna do it with style? So, there are a lot of talks about hiring, and this is definitely not one of them, but you're about to get a shameless plug. If you wanna hear some great advice, check out episode 287 of the Ruby on Rails podcast. Brian Mariani is the founder of Mira Placement, a Ruby on Rails-focused recruiting firm. We talked about how the Ruby job market is doing, what accompanying technologies employers are looking for, key interview tips, and if the fabled full-stack developer is still around. I definitely recommend giving that one a listen. But also, if you're looking for a new job, I highly recommend that you start here. RubyConf has an on-site jobs board where anybody can post or write information about openings. I checked, it is absolutely full to the brim, so do give that a check. What I am here is to offer advice on what to do when you're looking for your next opportunity. There's a lot of fear that quitting your job is gonna ruin your reputation, and we know how precious our reputation is to us. Your reputation is important. If you wanna leave on good terms, then you have to be stealth and smart. Starting off, don't leave before you leave. If you have a job, stick with it and act like you're gonna be at that job for the rest of your life. Do not check out at your current job. What that could lead to you is actually not having a job anymore. You could get fired for it. This leaves you demoralized and puts you in a position of weakness. You wanna come at your job search from a position of strength. Do not cry wolf. No one wants to work with someone who constantly says that they're gonna quit. That sort of negativity will likely lead you to be fired. If you're getting ready to quit, find a confidant outside of work to confide it to about your negative feelings. Search quietly. Update your LinkedIn profile. Yes, it's a necessary thing. Update your profile. Don't post your resume on job boards and don't drop hints that you're leaving. Be smart about scheduling. Schedule interviews outside of work hours as much as possible. Don't sabotage yourself by double booking yourself. Don't include your coworkers or bosses as references and ask your prospective employer to be discreet. If your prospective employer chooses not to be discreet with you, that's probably a telling sign that you shouldn't be going there. 
Try job search networking. It does work. At least 60% of all jobs are found by networking. Develop contacts, friends, families, neighbors, college alumni, perhaps Ruby friends, anyone who might help generate information and job leads. It is absolutely amazing who knows who, but keep that in mind. Everybody knows everybody. So if you're looking to leave, make sure you're discreet. And that leads me to remind you that you have an ever watchful new employer. Because the title of this talk is Hire Me, I'm Great at Quitting. Remember, if you leave your job on bad terms, your next employer is watching you. And your next employer might actually try to test you. They might try to see if you won't give two weeks to your next employer, if you're willing to sign a hastily written contract, all kinds of other shady things, and not give your employer any notice. They could be testing you. Our goal is to keep you as hireable as possible because whatever you do to your current employer, it's very likely that you're gonna to do to your next employer. So remember, keep that in mind. So you finally nab the next step in your career. It is finally time to quit. How do you go about doing it gracefully? Well, it's a science and an art. Quitting your job requires a lot of courage and skill. You can feel guilty about leaving your job, especially if your boss has put a lot of personal development into you, but ultimately you need to do what's best for your career. So I have an exciting announcement to share with you today. I have been building a product on how to make this transition flawlessly. Introducing the quitting kit. These are the tools that you need so you can quit as guiltless and smoothly as possible. Stick with me, Ruby friends. We're going places. Professionalism. Don't tell your colleagues about your plans before you tell your manager. You must quit in person and you must give at least two weeks notice. Make sure if you are remote, schedule a meeting with your boss with your camera on. This is a very personal interaction. And review your employment contract if you have one. The next one's tough, discomfort. You're gonna, get, you're gonna have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. You're not the first person who's ever quit, and believe me, you are certainly not the last. Be sure to know exactly what your message is before you approach your boss. You do not wanna stumble upon your words. Even if you're leaving on good terms, the conversation is gonna be awkward and difficult. Lead that conversation and understand that you have just ruined your boss's day. Stand firm. You wanna be firm in your decision and be prepared for any potential questions or objections your manager brings up. Are you prepared to say no to a counteroffer? While a counteroffer can be very tempting, take care not to fall into the trap or be blindsided to your own detriment. It is stressful enough to make this big decision. A lot of change is about to happen. You're about to uproot yourself from all your familiar coworkers, your commute, everything. Cash does not solve problems. So if the counter offer is purely cash, really think to yourself what that's gonna be adding to your, your general life. Tame the reaction. Even if you provide two weeks notice as a courtesy to your current company, your boss could ask you to imme leave immediately. This happens. There are no federal or state laws in the US requiring employers to provide their employees that, that two weeks that they have offered. So are you prepared to lose an additional two weeks of pay or possible health coverage? Defeat the bus factor with documentation. The bus factor, an unpleasant concept, is a measurement of the, resi the risk resulting from the information and capabilities not being shared amongst team members, derived from the phase in case they get hit by a bus. Now, the version that I like is that you've won an all expenses paid vacation and you have to leave immediately, but we'll go with the bus factor. If you find any component of your job that is undocumented, never shared, encrypted, unpublished, or in incomprehensible to others, then you must fix it immediately. This means sitting down and writing out every single detail of what you do day to day. While this is tedious, trust me, it will be so helpful to be able to point to your coworkers later. Succinct co communication. Out of all your colleagues, you'll usually grow closest with your teammates. They deserve to know about your future plans directly from you. Your goodbye email is a reflection of all the positive moments that you've had with your teammates, not the bad, and please express gratitude for the opportunity and privilege of working alongside them. Become a task slayer. Remember those tasks that stressed you out the most, that made you dread those Mondays? Well, make sure that you've given your coworkers the tools to handle those tasks with ease. While your coworkers may not immediately thank you for this, I guarantee they'll be cursing you less after you're gone, and that means one more bridge. Remember, those bridges are important. Remain intact. 
emotionally detach. Your coworkers can end up feeling like family. Quitting is not a betrayal, but it can be difficult and a tearful goodbye. Once, while driving to quit my first job in my career, I pulled over on the side of the road and I threw up. I took that time to be upset so that I could be as professional as possible once I entered my boss's office. It helps to make the effort to maintain the relationships with your coworkers that you like the most. Some of my very dearest friends in the whole world are people that I've worked with in the past. With any good kit, you're gonna have your core components, but you're also gonna have your additional optional accessories. Here are some to think of. A successor. Having a successor in place is optional. It is normally your choice to decide if you're gonna be uh, involved in selecting that successor, and that comes in two different ways. The positive part of being involved is that you can assist in writing the job description and making sure that you're really finding the best fit for that job. Now, if you're not involved, the good news, it gives your successor space to design the job in a way that they see fit. This is an odd one, but trust me, recommendations. Believe it or not, as you are leaving, this is prime time to ask your coworkers that you've had great relationships to write recommendations for you. In turn, offer the same to them. You will be grateful that you have them. Exit interview. Conducting an exit interview is entirely up to you and your company's culture. I've, had, I've seen it optional, I've been asked if I wanna do it, or I've been required to do it. It totally depends. Exit conversations are a means for your employer to learn what they need to do in order to retain key employees. Be honest about your reasons for leaving, but be careful. If you feel that you need to criticize individual peers or supervisors, remember that very seldom are people problems one-sided. I'm gonna pause here to take a quick drink. I provided a quick tweetable version of the quitting kit. All right, so I've just spent a lot of time convincing you that you should quit. However, we do need to stop to consider if there are situations where you should stay. What if you really shouldn't quit your job? Here are some considerations to think about what, before you do it. Can the situation be fixed? You love everybody except that one person. Fact, working with people is very difficult. Everything's going at great at work until one person decides they have it out for you. Do not let that one person have control over your career. Take a stand and or try to empathize with them to fix the situation. Leadership lacks, but change is coming. When you see the people above you are moving on or moving out, hold tight. This could mean a positive change for you. Their movement makes room for perhaps your advancement, a rule change, or even just a general work culture change. Hold tight. Boundaries are not set, but they could be. I'm a recovering people pleaser with a serious compulsion to say no problem without even thinking. This usually ends up leading me to be stressed and resentful, which isn't good for me or fair to my coworkers. I had to get comfortable with setting boundaries. If you find yourself without boundaries, try to fix this first by approaching your boss. You don't have any responsibility at work, but you could. Have a conversation with your boss to discuss your career goals. Let your boss what you know, what you hope to get out of your current position and how you wanna grow your career. Remember, we're thinking about that five years forward, right? This will give them the opportunity to give you the types of responsibilities that best suit your ambitions. Do not wait around hoping that your job role will change because it won't. You love the company mission and you still believe in it. For me as an example, I work for a nonprofit in Pittsburgh that, whose goal is to bring art to every single person in Pittsburgh, whether or not that person is spending money to buy a ticket to go to one of our shows or simply attending one of our free festivals. I love that mission and it's a big reason why I continue to work there today. If your company's mission still resonates with you, contemplate whether or not it's worth fighting to stay. Because in the end, after making strides to improve your work situation, if the thought of staying there for another five years does not fill you with panic, but instead with excited anticipation, perhaps you have found your place. So, you've still decided to quit. Things are going okay at your new gig, but you kind of wonder, have you made a mistake? What if your former company fixed the issues that you had with it? Well, there's good news. Boomerang right back. 
The idea of boomerang employees, workers who voluntarily leave a job at an organization and rejoin that same organization at a later date, is gaining more and more acceptance from hiring managers and in the labor force. They want the known knowns. The increasing acceptance of boomerang employees is partly due to that type job market that I was talking about. Companies want to know who they're bringing back into the company. Boomerang employees often bring back a fresh perspective. They've worked there before, they've gone elsewhere, gained new experience, and now they're bringing perhaps some new best practices back. According to Workplace Trends, three out of four employees would be willing to, be rehi to rehire former employees who performed well and left on good terms. Remember, we don't burn bridges. If a company is facing a talent shortage, it's critical that a company gives every employee a reason to want to return. Because even if they don't return, now you have a whole batch of people out there that can serve as brand ambassadors for a lifetime. If you decide to boomerang back, be prepared. Reintroduce yourself to everyone like you haven't worked there before. Reset their expectations about you. In turn, reset your expectations about everyone that you've worked with prior. And above all, be positive. The company culture might have completely changed in your absence, and so be ready to be positive about it and to go with the flow. We've reached the end of our quitting journey, and I hope I have inspired you. I want to remind you of one very specific idea. You only get one life. Do you often find yourself daydreaming that you were living a different life? Do you know what it would take in order to live that dream, especially when it comes to the very personal question of career happiness? Practicing career courage can make the difference between an exciting and fulfilling career and one where your greatest talents are underutilized. Be brave. Just because quitting is a little scary doesn't mean it's not a positive move for you. Bravery and all involves knowing what is important to you. None of these things come without experience. Trust in yourself. When it is time to quit, I want you to quit with finesse, purpose, grace, and professionalism. Thank you. So this is kind of an odd talk to have a q and I can certainly take questions, but I also thought if anybody had any fun quitting stories or anything, that would be very cool to share. I don't know if we have a microphone. Um, I should have asked that prior. Um, does anybody have any questions? Oh, great question. So this is something that actually happened with me before. Oh, yes. How, oh. Yeah, I've got the mic. Okay. How do you, how do you balance the two-week notice if the health uh, if your health mental state is not great and you want to make that transition smoothly, but you, you're not in a good place. So I've actually had this situation in the past, so this is an excellent question. That two weeks notice doesn't have to be a full-time two weeks. So what I did at one company is I actually cut my hours instead of eight hours a day, I cut to three. I basically, t I, they had a successor in place and so what I did is I gave the option to the successor and said, I will be available during these hours. Otherwise, I'm taking time off so that I can decompress and really be ready for that next job. Now, one mistake that I've done in the past is take, given two weeks notice, had a weekend, and then went immediately into the new job. And so one thing that I should know too, if you are able, and of course this is only if you're, uh, you have the privilege of being able to do this, but take a little bit of extra time just so that you can reset and really jump into that job at full, you know, full health. Good question. So that's a really good question. I'm gonna repeat what he just said. He said that he was working with a company in order to join as a uh, new employee and the employer would have been fine with him taking two weeks in order to get there, but the recruiter actually fudged it so that he would bring on immediately and perhaps that was because of a bonus that the recruiter would have gotten if you joined right away. Um, yes, that could absolutely happen. I had a situation with a recruiter where I was getting hired into a company, they were gonna partner me with a developer, and so I went to the recruiter and said, hey, I wanna meet the new team, I wanna meet this person. I wanna sit down and have coffee with them, make sure that I'm really gonna vibe with them, because it was gonna be such a one-on-one -on -one situation. And the recruiter said, absolutely not, the employer will never agree to that. So. I ended up still taking the job, and luckily I got along with that developer very well, but I mentioned that story to them, and they're like, oh, we would have absolutely set up a coffee. We had no idea that the recruiter told you that. 
So that's a very good uh, piece of advice as well. If a recruiter tells you something that doesn't quite vibe with what you think you're gonna get from that employer, definitely question it. Because sometimes it's just simply a misunderstanding. So what was raised is don't let your current employer pressure you into staying any longer than you feel is acceptable. Now, a good thing to note as well is that you can, you can set up a contracting gig with your current employer so you're being compensated. If you find that your current employer is constantly hounding you for information and things that they should be able to figure out themselves, because remember, we put together such wonderful documentation, everything is documented. But if they're hounding you constantly trying to get free work from you, then you need to set up a contracting situation or you need to cut it off completely. You have to be very clear, and that goes back to setting those boundaries and making sure that when you're done, you are done. Bridge is still intact, but making that line very clear. Such a good uh, question. So we're in a situation where a manager has had their day ruined because one of their favorite employees has come into their office and said that they're quitting. And what to do in that situation? OK, yes, great question. So in that case, what I like to do as a manager is you want to step into the shoes of that employee for at least one day during their, their time that they're transitioning out to make sure that you fully understand what's going on. In a lot of situations, you'll see they discover that this employee has had too much responsibility and maybe their job needs to be cut up into two, or that employee doesn't have enough responsibility and then they might consider not hiring a new person to fill that role. I think you want to have a very frank conversation and that's different than the exit interview. The exit interview is usually conducted by HR, it's very official, it's documented. You want to have like an honest lunch or a coffee with that manager the manager wants to conduct like a very honest because their goal is to retain that key, the key talent that's on their team. But you know, teams can be a wolf pack. And so, you know, a new person might come into the team, the wolf pack doesn't like them, they'll force them out. You want to make sure that that's not the situation because then you're dealing with a toxic team. So not only talking to the key people that are leaving the job, but you also want to talk to the people that they were interacting with as well and make sure that you get ahead of it. I have worked at many companies that when someone quits, you don't, you don't ever speak that person's name again or that person becomes the person that you blame everything on. Like that person never even touched that code. Oh, it's so-and-so's fault. You don't want to have a blame culture. And so as a manager, you want to get ahead of it and you want to not necessarily celebrate it but you know you want to make sure that your team is wishing that person well and that it's a positive environment. You certainly don't want to tell one of your teammates to go and pack up their pack up their desk while, while you're having a conversation with them. Good question. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I really appreciate you coming here today and enjoy the lightning talks.